All right, so it's been about five months since I did the last video about this van. So I thought we'd just uh, take it out of hibernation now here that it's spring. And we'll go over the different things we need to do with the road truck to get it back on the road. So you're going to need a couple supplies to do this. So let's go take a look at what you're going to want. You're going to need a ladder. This is a, a six foot step ladder. You might be better off with an eight foot ladder to be honest because you're going to have to get up pretty high on this. You're going to need a brush that you can hook up to the garden hose. I don't recommend this one because uh, when you leave the soap in it over winter it splits open and then it blows out the o-rings so I wouldn't get that one. You might want to have an antifreeze tester. That should have been something you checked before in the fall but uh, that's a good thing to have. Need some touch-up paint. Again, something you probably should have done in the fall. Need a wrench so we can pull the uh, coach battery out. Then a tire pressure gauge. So when you're checking your tires, they should have all been set in the fall before you parked it. And they should have all been around the same pressure. And then if you find one that's uh, dropped down in pressure significantly, then you know that uh, you've got a, a dud tire. And that includes checking the uh, Continental kit on the back. So uh, when you get to your vehicle, sorry, I'm kind of up against the wall here, but there's gonna be, just do a walk around and check and make sure there's nothing leaning against it because it may not be parked at your property. You might be renting a spot. Just kind of ch check it for damage. Look around. I've had to put these uh, bug covers on here to keep the wasps out. They like to plug up the furnace. So I'd recommend you do that. Check your tires for cracks. You can look for date codes on the battery or on the tires. But on these uh, tires, from what I recall, they are uh, the date codes are on the inside. I don't know if they do that intentionally to make people not return them after they get them put right back on or what. But just check for odd wear. Check the uh, wear bars on a vehicle like this. You're unlikely to wear the tires out. They'll probably rust. Or sorry rot out before you get uh, them worn down. Look for any uh, damage or what have you. Missing a piece of rubber trim there. It's in the vehicle. Just pop loose during the winter. So I gotta go in and reattach that. Obviously the paint's starting to peel off on there. Look for anything on the roof. Make sure your wipers aren't like stuck to the glass because you're going to turn them on in a little bit. Good to get the dust off of that. Check your hood. So these uh, vans are notorious for uh, chip paint on the hood. Never pressure wash these vans because once the water gets under the paint, it's going to blow all the paint off. The paint might fall off on its own anyway, but you don't need to help it. For uh, smaller chips, you can uh, dip your a toothpick into your touch-up paint and just touch it up a little bit or in the bigger chips you just brush it on. I've got a, a hood protector I've bought to put on this because it's been hit fairly hard a couple times and there's a couple dents on the hood so I'm just gonna paint it and cover it up rather than doing body work on it. Check your license plate, see if the sticker is up to date. Check your headlights. These headlights are prone to failure. They kind of haze up. You can buy replacements for I think they're like $30 each and they come with the bulbs in them. They're very inexpensive. So I just uh, replaced them. There's like two bolts holding on the lights. So don't uh, drive around like that. It makes it hard for anyone to see. On uh, steel wheels, if you see any rust stains coming down, or even on the aluminum wheels, that's usually an indicator that you've got a, a loose lug nut. You should check those to make sure they're all tight still. You take a look on the here, so I'm plugged in. This vehicle's got two battery chargers. There's one for the coach battery. Then there's another battery tender for the uh, starting battery. So uh, just to keep it so you don't have to boost it in the spring. So I'm just gonna get the ladder set up. We'll take a look on the roof. Then we'll move on to checking out the engine bay. All right, so as you can see, we're up, up near the roof now. So I may not have mentioned it specifically, but the brush here is actually for scrubbing the roof. You have to do that a couple times a year. Just the uh, dirt and whatnot accumulates on the roof. 
especially when your gel coat breaks down, then it really begins to uh, become a problem with the roof. So while you're up here, you're looking for any damage, any lumps or anything might have happened. If you were to drive this in the winter with a big pile of snow on it, you could have uh, cracked the roof and you don't want to do that. Look here, I put this caulking on this piece here and uh, replace the caulking on here as well. So what you'll find is that the caulking just gets loose on the edges and it looks good from a distance but you, if you can peel it back then the water can get through and it'll st stain the headliner in your vehicle so you don't want that to happen. Alright so moving down you're going to check the, uh, the drip rails here. These uh, in the newer road tracks this is a, a filled in seam. On the older road tracks it may not be but you'll have to clean this out with a sponge again a couple times a year just to get rid of any of the darkness that might accumulate in there. Make sure that the water can flow down to the front and back of the vehicle. You'll notice that this light here is riveted onto the vehicle and uh, they can have some aging issues so you might decide that you want to replace this at some point when it's uh, due for putting caulking on it. So now let's we'll go take a look at uh, the engine bay. You always take a look in here before you uh, start the vehicle. So uh, just look for anything unusual, like this pine cone kind of. Like, hmm, you don't even have a pine tree around here that that would have come off of. So this thing has traveled a fair distance. I don't know. Toss that over there, deal with it later kind of look around, see if there's any animals that have moved in over the winter. Check your air filter. These don't seem to fit on as tight as you might expect them to. Well, it's kind of hard to do it one-handed, but you just take a... a look in here. You should keep a log on the edge of the air filter. Looks good. Don't see anything accumulating in there. At least it's a good wire mesh air filter. It's not going to have anything living in there that can chew through the filter and go into the engine, I would hope. That's uh, your isolator for the battery on the coach end of things. You got some fuses down there. That cover is like a very difficult to remove, I'll just say that. You check your brake fluid. Check the level and cleanliness. It's starting to get a bit dark. I think I'm going to need to replace that. I have some plans for the, the brake lines as well. So on this vehicle, if you look at the uh, brake booster, you'll notice it's hooked up to the power steering system. This is a hydro boost. So you need power steering fluid for your brakes as well as uh, your uh, steering. So this is at the uh, full mark here on this side. And then there's a hot cold range as well. So this is full. So we're good there. You top up the washer fluid there. Always do that. Normally what I do is I try to keep all season fluid in this vehicle because it could have some left over for the winter. So take a look here. So it's, uh, there's a nice switch here on this battery that you could install depending where you park it, it might be a good idea because then you can, if you don't have a, a way to charge your battery, you can at least isolate it so it doesn't die. And uh, this thing still has the GM battery cables on it, so this battery doesn't accept GM cables, so we have some adapters on here. You check your antifreeze here. So it's a bit low, but I had done some work in the fall, so I was anticipating it being low. Check the engine oil, see if there's any coolant or anything in it. So you check right to the bottom. And it looks good. So that means I haven't had any catastrophic failure over the winter. If you had water in the engine or something, you have to freeze. Can't really tell you much about this thing. I don't even know if it works or not. But you just inspect your filter. If it's full of sand or something, just replace it. Check this when it's cold. See, it's on tight. I have to use two hands, just so bear with me for a second. Oh, 
Holy cow. So that's obviously was put on when it was warmer out and then it cold, it got tighter. So when you just check this and make sure that the fluid level is somewhere up around here or here, you wouldn't want to be down to the core. That would tell you you got a, a problem. These uh, clamps are a bit of a problem. You'll want to change these. And uh, there's another one down further somewhere else underneath that needs to be replaced as well. Yeah, down there. If you're losing coolant, that's one place I would be looking. So you take a look at the belt. I changed the belt in the uh, fall. So it's good to go. So everything looks like it's uh, in good shape in here. Make sure that the radiator is clean. Not easy to see with the camera. It doesn't see the way we see it necessarily. It focuses on the wrong spots. So power wash the radiator a couple times a year. And just take another peek down here. I will tell you with this six liter engine that the uh, oil pan gaskets are prone to failure as well as the oil cooler lines which are here which comes off just above the uh, oil filter. These are prone to fail where they switch to rubber. And then on this side it's got the same sort of thing here for the transmission cooler lines and again these uh, lines are prone to failure. So you should be uh, looking at pulling your oil pan and changing these lines as well. I don't know, maybe if when the vehicle is 10 to 15 years old. Because at that point, the van looks great when you go underneath of it and it's just soaked with oil all over the place. So then you'll take a look underneath, just see if there's anything hanging or broken or damaged. Everything looks pretty good here. You wouldn't want to drive off and find out that you've got your uh, sewer line deployed or something because it can swivel down and get pretty close to the ground. Check your exhaust pipe there, make sure there's nothing in it. And at this point, I guess we'll just take a look inside and make sure everything is secure. Then I'll get the air filter put back together and we'll start it up. I started it once during the winter. I only started in the winter if I'm going to let it get hot enough that it's going to burn all the condensation out of the exhaust. Because you don't want it to start and get the exhaust full of water and then turn it off. Because that's just going to make it rust. So you can see there's my oil pan gasket. It's getting ready for doing that in the fall. Make sure everything is secure. Make sure all the doors are closed before you move it. Everything should be good to go. Look for any new stains on the floor. That stain was left intentionally for me from my parents when I bought it because they knew that that roof was leaking somewhere. They wanted me to be able to see it and try and diagnose it. And what you'll find is that the water travels throughout the headliner. You'll get stains here and stains all along here. So you should go up there and pull that caulking off every couple of years and redo it if you're able to can turn on the pump. I'm going to do a separate video for the um, water system and turning it back on. So you're not going to find much discussion about the uh, water in this uh, video. So we'll just turn this off like I said and we'll, we'll get the vehicle started up. Alright so we'll just get it started up here. It's not going to give it any gas or anything. It's going to start and then prime the lifters. <laughs> They'll start it up, no problem. Let's take a look under the uh, hood here and see if there's anything out of the ordinary. I couldn't get the uh, coolant open. I'm going to have to let it warm up a little bit, but being mindful that it's dangerous. I'll also check the transmission fluid once the vehicle warms up completely. to warm up you'll think about what kind of problems you had last year that you forgot about and didn't finish. So I know with this one the uh, heater is a bit noisy on full power so I need to take the heater, the blower motor out to see if there's any debris stuck in it or replace it depending on what I find out. 
also going to take a look at the uh, coach battery here after we get the vehicle moved. And we're going to take a look at the propane tank and the generator. The generator hasn't run in five months. And it's always hard to start afterwards. Like when I put this away, I put premium gas in it. And I also put fuel stabilizer in it. And ran the generator under load running the uh, heat pump. Uh, do the uh, regular uh, load testing on that. But what you find out is that the fuel all flows back out of the generator after a short period of time and it's hard to start. So we're going to address that uh, later on in the video. So it seems like things are running pretty good. So we're just going to roll this forward and move over a bit. So one thing that's wrong with this is the uh, there's no door switches like you normally find in the door jams on this vehicle. The uh, door open close switch is actually part of the uh, locking mechanism. Right now my radio is on even though the door is off, open and the ignition is off. So it doesn't realize that the, the door had opened. So that's a problem because the uh, the chime isn't going to go off to warn you that the door is open. So I need to put a new uh, door latch in this vehicle as well. And uh, looking at the uh, gauges, everything was good. I probably should have had a look at that as soon as I started it to make sure it did build oil pressure. But uh, we're good to go. So we'll just take a look around the back. The uh, propane tank, in case you haven't noticed, is just in here, and then the Continental kit for the tire. So we gotta check the pressure on it, so we'll bring it down. It's kind of heavy, but not super heavy. So the uh, valve stem is available there now. You should take the uh, cover off and inspect it. I'm not gonna take it off completely. But there's a lock on here that we don't bother locking. You can have a bit of variation in tire diameter for your spare tire, but you can't go into the giant tires on this vehicle. So just uh, we, we leave it unlocked, otherwise it gets uh, rusty and hard to open. So then to take a look in here, these are just like tabs for holding bathroom mirrors on. Like Road Trap was a bit creative when they <laughs> came up with that idea. So there's a few things here that you want to look at. One, you're going to check the hose and look for cracks on it, see if it's uh, due for replacement. And in fact, the hose is good on this. I know that the uh, gas pressure reducer regulator is in bad shape, so I need to deal with it. There's another hose that comes off the tank that goes to a second pressure reducer. And I think it's in good condition, but I'm going to take them both out and replace them at the same time. Take a look here. So there's a yellow cap that goes over the uh, filler. And this one is broken. You can't smell any natural gas, but it's better if it's not broken. Because when you take it off for a refill, you'll know if your uh, tank is leaking at this point. Because some places require like a five or ten year inspection, some places don't. So you're pretty much up to your own devices to get these tanks inspected. This one hasn't been inspected and tagged since it was built in 2004. So that's uh, quite a long time. There's a uh, gauge here to tell you how much uh, propane is in the tank. It's frosted over, so that's something again I need to 
look at replacing and then there's a valve and you look at the tank and verify that there's no giant rust spots on it so you can remove that tank it's a little bit of effort so that's something I'm going to do maybe in another video because it's again it's due to replace it so we'll take a, a quick look under here like I said you check your uh, sticker on your plate we're good you check all of your lights for some of these lights you can just use the uh, remote control hit the unlock and see if they work for the uh, brake lights and the uh, reverse lights you'll need someone to help you or if you're near uh, like a big window or something where you can put in reverse and see your reflection that's another way of doing it these vehicles have problems with the body control modules and they uh, can't turn on the lights always so it's uh, an issue when you check your license plate light check that this cover is on here it's not loose it used to be riveted on and now there's screws or vice versa something happened here but uh, you also check the trough around the air conditioner with your ladder and make sure that it's uh, cleared out good to go that's uh, about it at the back you should check to make sure you've got your spare tire parts available before you go anywhere so to do that that just clears over the tire I have a power bar up on here is the uh, jack and there might be a tool instead of a power bar in here as well I don't know I just use a power bar and then I have a socket for the uh, tire this is a socket for the uh, anode in the batter in the uh, hot water tank so we'll take a look at that otherwise there's not much to look at there's uh, the inside water fillers here again that'll be in a different video so we'll take the uh, coach battery out now and take a look at that just going to put this uh, on the stand This is pretty simple, but you should do it. Just uh, take a look at it and clear any debris off the battery. And just uh, grease the slides. So some of these have like a wing nut on them. This one's a half inch bolt. It doesn't really matter, other than you gotta take this and open it once in a while and lubricate it. Some of the newer models have two six volt batteries near forward of this location but let's take a look in your manual and see where your battery is located here's a handle here reach down with your fingers push up there's some velcro I'm supposed to reach onto there So now this is like the tricky part is getting this battery to come out of here. There's not much space above it. And if you haven't had it out in a while, it's going to be a problem. Go back and forth a couple times. So you take a look here, see if there's anything really concerning that you see. It looks to me like this battery is leaking a bit, so I'll have to rinse it off. You just check the connections, make sure that they're tight. Seems to be kind of just a little bit wet on top. Check the age of it. These batteries are garbage. I'd rather have 6 volt batteries instead of these 12 volt batteries. That's another uh, problem to fix on another day. There's a shunt on here and some uh, little control wires that go back to the uh, metering system inside the coach which are out of service right now. But anyway, you take took a look here. Things are tight. So that's uh, good to go. Now, uh, one thing I didn't mention was that uh, for the uh, paint, I'll just take a look at that again. Getting the paint coat is quite easy. It's just on the door. 
So we'll just uh, have a look here. All of the options on the vehicle are on the passenger door. And I'm just trying to refresh my memory as to what. This is Olympic white on here, which is 8624. So after the U is an 8624. And then when you look on here, it's 8624. That's how you match uh, your paint color. But hey, all the road checks are white. No, I guess not. Some of them are black. There's a couple different variations in color. So they're not all white vans. So now I'm going to check the tire pressure on all five tires and see if I got any problems with any of them. Then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I checked the tire pressure. This uh, front driver tire is down to 50 PSI. The three tires on the back were at 70 PSI. And then the uh, this tire here was at 60 PSI. So that kind of tells me that the front driver tire is leaking a little bit. So I got to deal with it. I was able to get the uh, cap off of this thing finally. And uh, fluid level was kind of right around here, right where I was expecting it. So we'll just check the uh, concentration right now because it that impacts the uh, boiling point and the uh, freezing point. So we'll just uh, take a sample. I think I need a little bit more. Do that again. Now we're full. Okay. So we got a, a pretty healthy uh, batch in there. As you can see, it's pointing at uh, just a bit above minus uh, 43 Celsius, which coincides with 131 Celsius for boiling temperature. So we know we're uh, good. You can't use 100% antifreeze, that wouldn't work. Usually just right around 50-50 has always been a good mix for us up here in Canada. The Americans might mix it a little bit different depending on where you're at. But if you come visit us, you might want to be at 50-50. So, I think that's uh, about it for the uh, vehicle. We'll take a look at the uh, more of the RV side next. All right, so we're good to get ready to turn on the uh, propane here. I think I left it on over winter, to be honest. I had to use a wrench to close it. So I think I might have had it open too tight and then I thought it was closed and inadvertently left it open all winter. But anyway, we'll see if we have any propane in the system or not. So to do this, you're gonna get some uh, soapy water. You're gonna check a few different things. So there is a uh, propane line that runs in this wheel well here. To the furnace you can see it possibly below the brake cable there in that corrugated loom so that's a copper line that goes to the furnace so if this vehicle ever had a blowout that tire can usually rip those off because it goes right through the area so that's another reason to keep your uh, propane turned off while you're traveling have a look over here on this side before we turn this on Take this cover off here. Don't reach in there because then you'll have to rearrange that because it bumps the other way. So I'm not sure if this one has an on off switch for the gas supply or not. We don't typically use it. This is the uh, hot water tank. This hot water tank, the uh, blow off valve is actually seized. So you're not going to be putting any water in this. And here you turn these sideways lift that out. You see I put a new uh, line in here last year. I changed the refrigerator. Then there's uh, copper fittings here. We're going to check that with the soapy water. Make sure that this is all good. This goes into here. This is for the uh, refrigerator. There is a uh, place to turn off the refrigerator right there. But uh, when the uh, screw is in line with the hose it's on so we'll have a, a peek in there make sure this is working the chimney kind of vents out in here so make sure that's not all plugged up so I'll just turn on the uh, gas
normally you would adhere to hiss. As the stem rises out, you open this all the way just to lightly seat the valve. Don't hear any noises. Take a bit of soapy water. Look for anything bubbling here. That looks pretty good. You can check the whole line. There's, uh, like I said, there's a couple regulators underneath of the uh, bumper. You can check, you can check here. Check the end of the line there. This is for the barbecue in case you're not up on that. Then we'll go get some more water and check things out over here. If there's a leak, hopefully it's apparent. Check those all out. Check the back in there. Maybe the stove on the inside, you can look around and see where uh, that's uh, available to inspect. This uh, other end of a hard line going to the hot water tank, so you can check that. That seems okay. Like I said, we're not going to look at the water in this video. We'll do that. Alright, so after you get the uh, gas lines tested for leaks, you go inside. I got the vehicle powered up right now on the AC, so I can test a couple different things. So uh, as you come around, there's a few safety items to check before you start up the uh, gas burning appliances. So one is you want to make sure you have a fire extinguisher. So that's it right here. This is a Kitty brand. There was a lot of recalls on these, but what you're looking for is that, that this is in the green. And you'll check the, uh, the date on the bottom of it. It says 2018. This was uh, replaced under a recall. I don't recall how long you're supposed to keep these, probably under five years. So you're gonna take it out and you're going to shake it a little bit. And it's full of baking soda. So when you turn it upside down, you should feel the baking soda move inside. So you might need to use a rubber mallet to bonk on that a little bit, but you gotta break up the baking soda so it's not hard. You check the GFI receptacles. There's probably gonna be a couple of them in the vehicle that need to be tested. Go in here, test the uh, smoke alarm here. You have to be careful as to whether you've got a RV rated smoke detector or not. This one is not. It's a combination uh, CO and smoke with a 10 year unreplaceable battery. These are also made by Kitty, and they had a recall on these where the uh, there was a plastic cap over the uh, sensor that was supposed to detect uh, the smoke or the CO. So that's uh, <laughs> a real problem. So we just run this. I'm gonna keep my finger over the buzzer so it's not too noisy. So we'll verify that it's working. That's there. I'm not sure I have a flashlight in here, but underneath, you're gonna find on the right hand side, there is a uh, liquid propane detector on the floor. You'll need to go under there and push the button and verify it works. They also have a limited lifespan, so some of them go into alarm and tell you when they need to be replaced, some of them don't. So you have to keep track of that. If you just bought the vehicle, more than likely you need to replace that. And down further back, there's a, another CO detector, <coughs> pardon me, that needs to be uh, inspected from time to time and checked the manual. As far as replacements go, the furnace is right here on the left. It's this uh, item here. So make sure there's nothing in front of it. Sorry, it's dark down there. I can't really help with it right now. I don't have a flashlight. So we're gonna start up the uh, this thing here. Turn on the fan, it's gonna be a little bit noisy. The lighting function doesn't work on here. I don't know what it takes to make it work. It doesn't, you can take the thumb screws off here and check underneath to make sure there's no leaks. I'm just going to light it, the barbecue lighter. Kind of 
difficult and blow up on me. That one works. The next one has a problem and you'll probably recognize. It is not getting a uh, right gas dispersion for some reason, so we don't use that one. I need to figure out what the problem is. There's probably something plugging the uh, gas passage. So that's one of the reasons I was talking about whether I do need to replace the uh, pressure of regulators in the back. So we're getting mosquitoes coming in here now. I have to hurry up. So now that we've proven that works, we got to check the three-way fridge three different ways. So this is like the newest uh, Dometic fridge, as far as I know, that's available on the market. I'm trying to just deal with the focus here. Camera is not playing too nice right now. Sorry. So right now it's in auto, it's gone to AC because AC is available. And you could also tell it to go to gas. So it's on gas right now. And then the next thing you're gonna do is tell it to go to DC. And that's where this uh, device bugs out. You can see there's a couple lights on at the same time. And it has a problem, it needs a new control board. So I'll put it back to auto and it goes to AC. It's gonna run it in those three different modes to make sure that it works. This one doesn't have a uh, attachment to leave it kind of hanging open in the winter, unfortunately. So now, like I said, we're not gonna deal with the, uh, the water side of things. You can test here, you can see out of propane, my waters are all low, my battery is charged. We're going to run the generator after the fact as well because I want to do something with the fuel line there. You know, test all of your lights. Have the TV, might check that works if that's important to you before you go. I have installed the antenna in here for that. Got a couple of DVDs, it's got a DVD player on the side of it. And then uh, this is a DC TV, so you don't need to run the inverter to make it work. Consider buying that style if you're going to use the TV in the evenings if, and if you just do dry camping. Now for this thing here, you have to test a couple different things. We'll start with the fan. So fan works. Cool. It's probably gonna have to turn it down pretty far to make it work. But you should hear it cycle. Yeah, so the uh, cooler is working. It's not the right day to test whether it's actually putting out cold air or not. Then we'll go to heat pump. So this is going to, wait a minute. You hear it cycling now, it's going to the uh, heat side of things. You just feel after a few minutes to see if it needs coming or not. Then, so yeah, this is how you turn it off. Now I'm going to go and test the furnace. So this will turn off in a minute. And you can you probably couldn't hear it, but the furnace started to cycle. And the fan is on now. I can feel the air coming out of it. We're gonna run that for a little while. Sorry for the noise. We'll run that until we're getting heat out of it. Not yet, there's a heat exchanger in there. It is kind of like a fireball right underneath of your bed, so it's kind of a, a scary thing. That's why you wanna make sure all your safety systems are working. The first time you run it, it's quite smelly. So you just have to kind of bear that in mind. So run it before you go on your trip. That way it doesn't stink out the uh, camper before you turn it on, or when, before you go to bed at night. If you want to run it at night to keep you warm. So being thermostatically controlled, it'll turn off and on a number of times during the night, depending on how cold it is. And then when you're done with it, you turn it off. And like I said, this will slowly turn off on its own. 
the furnace is still on. It needs a bit of a cool down time there as well. We're not going to do the water, but you would test to make sure the toilet and the sinks are working. You tested this. Make sure that works. You'll test all the lights inside. Might want to try to pop some popcorn or something in there to make sure it actually puts out enough power to do anything. Because as they get old, sometimes they just don't have any strength. I'm going to test the uh, fantastic fan. And again, sorry for the noise, but the furnace will turn off here in a minute. This is thermostatically controlled, so you can sort of guess at what temperature you want during the evening. And uh, to turn it on, you turn it here, but nothing happens. You wonder well, why is that? So you have to adjust the thermostat. until you get to the point where it's uh, going to trigger depending how cold you want it. So that makes sure that the fan doesn't run full blast all night and freeze it out. So close that. If this one has forward and reverse or not, it should. Yeah, so the furnace is uh, run and cycled off now. So I've got this set down. Now we'll just pop up into the front of the vehicle here and just familiarize ourselves with uh, how it works. So you can kind of walk through. So check your horn. You may not use that very often, so you might as well give it a shot before you go. Check your flashers. Check your brake lights. Check your running lights. This is an American vehicle. I don't really know how it works. It's kind of weird. Check your dash lights. Check your defrost. Make sure that works. Your mirrors. It doesn't have heated mirrors, so depending on the time of year, they can get kind of foggy on you. The uh, tow haul mode on the older vehicles is a bit dangerous. You might think that, that if you put it in tow haul when you're in the mountains, it might help you going down the hills, but it doesn't. It does not have descent control on this vehicle, so it will run away. How do you do the high beams on this thing? So anyway, if you're going into mountains, you'll have to like put it in third gear as opposed to drive with the tow haul. It's a little bit weird. It cost me a set of brakes learning that and nearly killed me. So you'll want to be aware of that when you're in the mountains. So I own too many vehicles, I can't remember how to turn off the high beams on this thing. Okay, this one you flip forward. Some of them you push backwards. These stupid things are all different. For the wiper, obviously you do that before you go on the road to remind yourself how it works. That's the intermittent wipers, that's your cruise control. That thing always baffles me when I'm going down the road. Again, because I have too many vehicles to remember how they all work. Check your gauges, they should all be good. Still have lots of fuel, battery is charging. All that is good. You can cycle through the uh, miles. That's how many miles are on this thing, 97,000. You could check the radio, I just have it off. It's an aftermarket radio check the cigarette lighter works. This one has a problem where it blows the fuse so it doesn't work. Not that we smoke, but it's something to keep in mind. Just check what you've got in here. You should have a tire pressure gauge in here, flashlight, different things. A little Dutch broom there for cleaning out the back. Make sure you have everything you need. Definitely bring your flip flops for when you're going into the shower so you don't catch any communicable diseases on your feet. Although this is a kind of a funny year where nobody's going anywhere. But hey, you can always dream about next year. So uh, I think at that point, we got the wipers working, everything in the console works. High beams are off, so that's good. Check your blower. 
see mine's kind of got a rumbling sound to it. So that's another thing I got to fix. Life of a camper. It's a really nice looking camper, but at 15 years old now, it's got some issues that need to be dealt with. But that's okay, no complaints there. So in the last little bit of the video, just bumped my head on the ceiling there, kind of surprised me. We'll talk about starting the generator. Because basically what you'll find is that, how do you even start this thing? That's right, you've got to push this in. You hear it cranking. It takes a long time to start this thing. And it's because the fuel runs out. All right, so we started it. So you can see there, it's gonna hunt for a little bit. And now that we started the sequence, we are going to have to put some load on it. So I need to uh, disconnect from the shore power and I'm going to start the heat pump and run the microwave. So, actually that's running off of the generator. As you can hear, it's stumble. So I'll probably put this on. I'm not sure how long they tell you to run it. Let's say we'll run it for 15 minutes. It's in the manual how long to run this thing. But you got a good load on the generator now. It's only like a three horsepower generator. So you give this thing a good burn. Get the uh, stator and rotor warmed up nice and toasty. And then you'll, after this is done, You'll turn off all the loads and let it run for, I don't know, however long in the manual for it to cool down. I don't remember the specific times. And I don't want to say it and cause damage to your generator. So be sure to read the manual. And the manual should always be with you at all times so that you can remind yourself on anything you've forgotten. So uh, I guess we'll wrap up the video. I'm gonna do a different video where I put a fuel primer on the generator just to make it a bit easier to start after uh, long periods of sitting. And uh, that'll be it, so uh, thank you for watching.